Hi, I'm David Cantor with the Law Offices of David Michael Cantor. Today I'm going to talk about probation violations. Now, there's a chronology to these. First thing that happens if you're on probation and if they think that you violated, the PO or probation officer is going to file a petition to revoke probation. Now he's going to base it on a violation of one of your terms. If he, they say you committed a new crime, that's called a term one violation. If you abscond or fail you to show up at meetings, if you possess a firearm, that's also a term one violation. If that occurs, now you're at risk for mandatory prison time. And go to our site, dmcantor.com, and that's called misconduct involving weapon, and we can talk to you about that, or felon possessing a firearm. If you fail a UA, if you possess or consume alcohol or illegal drugs, if you drive illegally, all of these can be reasons for a petition to revoke. The second stage after they take you into custody, you will be non-bondable. That means no matter how much money you have, they can't give you bond unless the judge says so. They will do a probation violation arraignment. And that's where the judge says, okay, non-bondable, or you know what, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. This doesn't happen a whole lot, and it's very difficult, but we've done that. They release you, and then at a later date, you go to the next um, hearing. Now, what we try to do at this level is we try for a disposition agreement on a technical violation. We, what that means is we go in, prior to the hearing, we talk to the PO, and we say, look, if and we talk to the prosecutor. If he admits that he missed a few meetings, will you go ahead, reinstate him on probation, and let him get out of custody? Or maybe give him a little bit longer probation, something of that nature, anything other than prison. Now at the probation violation hearing, that's the next thing. If we don't have an agreement, uh, then there's a trial regarding the various allegations on the violation. Now you have to beware because hearsay is allowed, so it's really easy for them to make their burden of proof. Now, if you are found that you violated probation, the judge will set it to a probation violation disposition. Now, if we cut a deal at the arraignment, we do the disposition on the spot, and then you're out. If we can't, and it's up to the judge, what's the judge going to do? Give you more probation or send you to prison? We're going to set it to the probation violation disposition hearing, and we're going to present mitigating evidence. Um, what we will do is we'll ask that you be reinstated on probation, maybe with a little bit more time, or maybe what's called IPS, that's Intensive Probation Services. If they ultimately decide they're going to revoke you, they'll send you to prison. Now, believe it or not, we've had clients who say, you know what, I can't take it anymore. Go ahead and negotiate the lowest amount of prison time you can get me. Just tell them to revoke me. And we've done that where people have actually only had to serve a month or two remaining to fill a, a prison sentence and then they're off probation forever. So there's a lot of ways we can approach this. So if you or a loved one have been charged with a probation violation, contact our office. We'll do a free initial consultation. It doesn't cost you anything, but it takes about 30 minutes. You can talk to us. We have multiple certified criminal law specialists, and we'd love to help you out.